Nox Prime executed Alex, a human child, on false charges, so Captain Chris Scorer warned the Voxari scum, Run, or you're all fucking dead. A distorted video feed showed Alex sobbing in a dim Voxari prison cell. Chris, please, I didn't do anything. You have to help me. Captain Scorer clenched his fists as his little brother's panicked voice crackled through the comlink from the Empire-controlled planet. He swallowed hard. So I'm coming, Alex. Those Voxari bastards can't get away with this. Just hold on. Voxari guards stormed into the cell. One smashed his plasma rifle into Alex's head. The video cut out. Scora punched the wall, leaving a dent in the steel. He opened a secure channel to Admiral Graves. Sir, requesting an emergency extraction op. The Voxari arrested my brother on bullshit charges. We need to get him out now. Negative, Scorer, Graves replied. Knox Prime is Empire territory. An unsanctioned incursion could trigger a war. I can't authorize it. God damn it, those alien fucks have my brother. I'm not leaving him to rot. Stand down, Captain. That's an order. We'll pursue this through proper diplomatic channels. Scorer ended the call. Fuck diplomacy. Alex needed him. He grabbed his railgun and headed for the hangar. One way or another, he'd get his brother back. Even if he had to kill every last Voxari himself. Two weeks crawled by without any progress. No matter how many encrypted transmissions Scorer sent, how many back channels he tried to navigate, the Voxari stonewalled him at every turn. He couldn't get any information on Alex's whereabouts or status. His hands shook as he gripped the edge of the console, staring at another request-denied message on the flickering screen. A chime from his comm badge made Scorer jump. He tapped it with a trembling finger, a sense of dread twisting in his gut. Scorer here! Captain Scorer! The voice was cold and unfamiliar, laced with a cruel Voxari accent. I am Commander Zaxrin of the Voxari Empire. I regret to inform you that your brother, Alex Scorer, has been executed for his crimes against the Empire. The world tilted. Scorer grabbed the wall to steady himself, bile rising in his throat. No, no, that's not possible. He didn't do anything wrong. The evidence against him was irrefutable, Zaxrin said, sounding bored. His sentence was carried out this morning. As a courtesy, I am sending you the footage of his execution. The Empire wishes you a pleasant day. The link terminated with a click. Scorer's comm badge chirped again, signalling an incoming video file. His hand hovered over it, shaking violently. He had to see. He had to know. With a tap, he opened the file. The video showed Alex on his knees, hands bound behind his back. Purple bruises mottled his face, one eye swollen shut. His lip was split, blood trickling down his chin. Voxery guards flanked him on either side, plasma rifles aimed at his head. Chris, if you get this... Alex's voice cracked. I love you, I'm sorry, please don't blame yourself. This isn't your... A rifle cracked across his face, snapping his head to the side. Scorer flinched. The guards hauled Alex back to his knees. One of them gestured, and a Voxari firing squad marched into view. Ready, the lead Voxari bellowed. The squad raised their rifles. Aim! Alex squeezed his eyes shut, tears cutting through the blood and grime on his face. Fire! The plasma rifles erupted in a blaze of blue light. Alex jerked and crumpled to the ground, a smoking hole in his head. Scorer screamed. He hurled his comm badge against the wall so hard it shattered. His legs gave out and he sank to the floor, sobs ripping from his throat. Alex was gone. His baby brother was dead, and it was all his fault. Grief gave way to rage, searing and all-consuming. Scorer dragged himself back to his feet, every muscle coiled with tension. The Voxari would pay for this. He would make them pay if it was the last thing he ever did. Scorer sent a comm to Admiral Graves, requesting leave to travel to Knox Prime to retrieve Alex's body for a proper burial. But when he arrived, the Voxari officials were less than cooperative. I'm sorry, Captain Scorer the Voxari minister said, not sounding sorry at all. But your brother's remains have already been disposed of. There is nothing for you to collect. Disposed of, Scorer snarled, slamming his fist on the desk. He was my brother. 
He deserved a fucking funeral. The minister leaned back, unfazed. He was a criminal. He got what he deserved. I suggest you return to your ship and move on. Scorer stormed out of the office before he did something that really would start a war. He stalked through the streets of the Voxari capital, seething with impotent fury. A cloaked figure stepped out of an alley and fell into step beside him. Captain Scorer, the figure said in a low, gravelly voice, I have information about your brother. Scorer whirled, hand dropping to his sidearm. Who the fuck are you? The figure held up clawed hands in a placating gesture. A friend, I know what really happened to Alex. It was a setup, orchestrated by General Zolthar. Zolthar, why would he... To send a message. The Empire is expanding into human territory. Zolthar wanted to make it clear that any interference will not be tolerated. Your brother was just a pawn in his game. Scorer's blood turned to ice in his veins. Alex had died for nothing more than a fucking power play. He grabbed the informant by the front of his cloak. Where can I find this Zolthar? The informant relayed coordinates to a secret base on the outskirts of the city. Be careful, Captain. Zolthar is well guarded and ruthless. Your quest for vengeance will likely be a one-way trip. Scorer released him with a mirthless laugh. Don't worry about me. Zolthar should be the one watching his back. He checked the ammo in his sidearm and headed for the base, a cold determination settling over him. Zolthar had taken everything from him. Now Scorer would take everything from Zolthar, even if it killed him. The journey back to Earth was a blur. Chris barely registered the concerned looks from his crew or the gentle inquiries about his well-being. He spent most of the trip locked in his quarters, staring at the cold metal walls, his mind replaying the horrific footage of Alex's execution on a loop. The grief was a physical ache in his chest, a yawning void that threatened to swallow him whole. But beneath the pain, a white-hot rage simmered, growing hotter with each passing hour. When he finally set foot on Earth again, Chris wasted no time. He marched straight into UEG headquarters, ignoring the startled looks from the guards and personnel. He barged into the council chamber, interrupting a meeting between the high-ranking officials. Captain Scorer, what is the meaning of this intrusion? Admiral Graves demanded, rising from his seat. Chris slammed his fist on the table, making the holographic displays flicker. The meaning, Admiral, is that the Voxari murdered my brother in cold blood, and I have proof. He tossed a data chip onto the table. It skittered across the surface, coming to rest in front of the Admiral. Graves picked it up, his brow furrowed. What is this? A video of Alex's execution, along with evidence that it was orchestrated by a Voxari general named Zolthar. He had my brother framed and killed to send a message to humanity, to intimidate us into staying out of their way as they expand into our territory. The council chamber erupted into chaos. Shouts of outrage and dismay filled the air as the officials watched the brutal footage. Admiral Graves's face turned ashen, his hands trembling as he gripped the edge of the table. This is an act of war, one of the councillors declared, slamming his fist on the table. We must respond with force, and risk the full might of the Voxari Empire coming down on our heads? Another countered. We're not ready for that kind of confrontation. The debate raged back and forth, but Chris barely heard it. His gaze was fixed on Admiral Graves, waiting for his response. Finally, the Admiral raised a hand, silencing the room. Captain Scorer is right, he said, his voice heavy with resignation. We can't let this stand, but Councillor Gian is also correct. We're not equipped for a full-scale war with the Voxari. Not yet. He turned to Chris, his eyes hard. Captain, I'm tasking you with a covert mission. Assemble a team of our best operatives. You're going to hit the Voxari where it hurts. Disrupt their operations. Sabotage their infrastructure. Show them that humanity will not be cowed by their brutality. Chris nodded, a grim smile tugging at his lips. With pleasure, sir. He left the council chamber with a newfound sense of purpose. He had names to be crossed off a list, and he knew just the people to help him do it. 
His first stop was Jack Hawkins' place. The grizzled veteran had been Chris's second in command back in the day, before an injury had forced him into early retirement. But he was still sharp as ever, and Chris knew he'd jump at the chance to get back in the fight. Jack answered the door with a scowl, which quickly turned to a grin when he saw who it was. Well, well, if it isn't Captain Chris Scorer darkening my doorstep. Thought you'd forgotten about us little people. Chris clasped his old friend's hand. Not a chance, Jack. I've got a job for you. A chance to make those Voxari bastards pay for what they did to Alex. Jack's eyes hardened. I heard about that. I'm so sorry, Chris. Alex was a good kid. He stepped back, gesturing for Chris to come inside. Tell me what you need. They spent the next few hours hunched over Jack's kitchen table, going over the intel Chris had gathered and sketching out a plan of attack. They identified key Voxari outposts and supply lines, targets that would hit the Empire where it hurt without provoking all-out war. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the cluttered room, Jack leaned back in his chair with a satisfied grunt. Looks like we've got ourselves a solid plan. Now we just need a team to carry it out. Chris nodded, a fierce light in his eyes. I've already got a few names in mind, the best of the best, people I trust with my life. Jack grinned, cracking his knuckles. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go round up this band of misfits and show those Voxari scum what happens when you mess with humanity. The stolen Voxari shuttle touched down on Zektar, its cloaking device rendering it invisible to the Imperial censors. Chris and his team moved silently through the night, the faint starlight glinting off their matte black armor. They crept towards the looming Voxari factory complex, a sprawling maze of steel and shadows. Jack hacked the security door and they slipped inside, fanning out through the labyrinthine corridors. They planted C-12 charges at key structural points, working with practiced efficiency. Chris armed the final detonator and nodded to his team. Charges set. Let's get the hell out of here. As they turned to leave, a plasma bolt sizzled past Chris's head. A squad of Voxari soldiers emerged from the darkness, weapons blazing. At their head strode General Zolthar, his eyes glinting with malice. Did you really think you could sneak into my facility undetected, human? Chris and his team dove for cover, returning fire. Plasma bolts and tracer rounds crisscrossed the corridor in a deadly light show. Two of Chris's men went down, but they took a dozen Voxari with them. Zolthar fixed his gaze on Chris. You must be the brother of that pathetic whelp we executed. I'm going to enjoy killing you. Chris snarled and lunged at Zolthar, tackling him to the ground. They grappled across the blood-slicked floor, trading brutal blows. Zolthar was strong, but Chris was fueled by rage and raw desperation. He pinned Zolthar and wrapped his hands around the general's throat. Zolthar thrashed and clawed at him, but Chris held on, squeezing with all his strength until he felt the Voxari's neck snap. He let the body fall to the floor with a thud. Alarms shrieked through the complex as Chris staggered to his feet. Time to go, people. Move. They sprinted for the exit, plasma bolts nipping at their heels. Voxari reinforcements flooded into the factory, but Chris and his surviving team members managed to fight their way clear. They piled into the waiting shuttle and rocketed into the sky. Chris slammed his fist on the detonator. The factory exploded behind them, a massive fireball lighting up the night like a second sun. Debris rained down as secondary explosions ripped through the complex, utterly obliterating it. As they broke orbit, Chris allowed himself a grim smile. The Voxari had drawn first blood, but humanity was more than ready to answer in kind. This was only the beginning. The Voxari High Council convened in a flurry of snarls and gnashing teeth as news of the attack on Zektar spread across the Empire at FTL speeds. Every viewscreen, from the core worlds to the fringes, displayed footage of the smouldering ruins that had once been a proud bastion of Voxari military might. This is an outrage. One councillor slammed a clawed fist on the obsidian table, leaving a spiderweb of cracks. The humans must pay for this insolence. Agreed, hissed another, her eyes narrowed to slits. We should launch an immediate counter-strike, raise their colonies to ash. 
The debate raged, voices rising in a cacophony of fury and wounded pride. But in the end, they were forced to concede that they had no proof of the UEG's involvement. The attackers had left no trace, their identities concealed by bleeding-edge stealth tech and a frustrating degree of competence. We will find those responsible, the Emperor finally declared, his voice a low, seething rumble. And they will learn the true cost of defying the Voxari Empire. Light years away, Chris Scora allowed himself a tight smile as he reviewed the intelligence reports. The Voxari were on the defensive, scrambling to shore up their vulnerabilities and jumping at shadows, just as he'd intended. But there was no time to rest on their laurels. The next phase of the plan was already in motion. Coming up on the target now, Jack reported from the pilot's seat of their cloaked ship. Looks like the access codes we liberated are still good. The codes had been lifted from a high-ranking Voxari science officer, in an operation that had been more wet work than espionage. But Chris would shed no tears for the dead Voxari. Not after what they'd done to Alex. The asteroid base grew larger in the viewscreen as they approached, a sprawling complex of domes and spires jutting from the rocky surface. Cutting-edge sensor arrays swept the void, but the ship's cloak held. The hangar doors opened at their stolen command, allowing them to glide in uncontested. Chris and his team moved swiftly through the eerily sterile corridors, neutralizing the scattered patrols with ruthless efficiency. Scientists and guards alike crumpled under muffled bursts of suppressed gunfire, their deaths as silent as they were, sudden. They found their target in a secure lab, deep in the heart of the asteroid. Rows of cylinders lined the walls, each filled with a cloudy amber fluid. Within them floated grotesque, half-formed creatures, their features a twisted parody of human anatomy. My God! breathed one of the operatives, her face pale. Is that what I think it is? Chris nodded grimly, scanning the Voxari text on the monitors. A bioweapon, engineered to target human physiology. His jaw tightened. We're shutting this down, now. They downloaded what data they could, then planted demolition charges throughout the lab. Chris paused to tuck a sample vial of the amber fluid into a reinforced case, as vile as the weapon was, it could provide valuable intel for the UEG's scientists. Alarms shrieked as they raced back to the hangar, the charges' timers counting down with merciless precision. They piled into the ship, sealing the hatch just as the explosions began, a rippling series of detonations that tore through the asteroid's innards. But as they accelerated away from the base's fiery demise, a squadron of Voxari fighters shimmered into view, their cloaks disengaging as they opened fire. The ship shuddered under the onslaught, shields straining. Jack, Chris shouted over the cacophony of blaring alarms. Remember that stunt you pulled at Arcturos? The veteran pilot flashed a fierce grin. I thought you'd never ask. Chris white-knuckled his restraints as Jack sent the ship hurtling into the densest part of the asteroid field weaving and juking with preternatural skill. The Voxari fighters doggedly pursued, pummeling their shields with lances of incandescent plasma. One by one Jack led the fighters to their doom, coaxing them into the path of tumbling space rocks, or catching them in the fiery backwash of their ship's overclocked engines. But even as the last pursuer vanished in a plume of shattered stone and vaporized metal, a final plasma bolt slammed home, breaching their shields and scorching a molten gash along the ship's flank. Damage alarms warbled as Chris dragged himself to the cockpit, the acrid stench of burning circuitry stinging his nostrils. Jack wrestled with the controls, his brow beaded with sweat as he coaxed the limping vessel out of the asteroid field. How bad? Chris asked, eyeing the flickering readouts. Bad enough, Jack grunted. That last hit took out our cloak and the FTL driver's shot. We'll be limping home on backup power. Chris absorbed that with a slow nod, his gaze fixed on the infinite expanse of stars stretching beyond the viewscreen. They'd struck another blow against the Voxari, but the road ahead remained long and treacherous. He thought of Alex, of the empty space at his side that would never be filled, of the rage and grief that drove him, 
cold and inexorable as an arctic current. The Voxari had started this war, and come hell or high water, Chris would be the one to finish it. The battered ship limped into Earth's orbit, trailing smoke and sparks. Chris gritted his teeth as he guided the wounded vessel towards the UEG's private landing pad. Jack, nursing a dislocated shoulder, flashed him a pained grin. Another smooth landing, Captain. Chris snorted. If by smooth you mean we didn't explode on re-entry, then sure, smooth as silk. Fair soon as they touched down, a swarm of medics and technicians descended on the ship. Chris waved off the medics, insisting they tend to his team first. He had a more pressing matter to attend to. Clutching the reinforced case containing the bioweapon sample, Chris marched into the UEG headquarters. He handed off the case to a team of grim-faced scientists, their eyes widening as he briefed them on its contents. Hours later, Chris stood before the UEG Council, his hands clasped behind his back as he listened to the lead scientist's report. The Voxari have engineered a virus that specifically targets human physiology, the scientist said, his voice tight. It attacks the respiratory system, causing rapid onset of symptoms similar to severe pneumonia. In simulations, it achieved a 90% mortality rate within 72 hours of exposure. Admiral Graves blanched. My God, if they deploy this... It would be catastrophic, the scientist confirmed. Entire colonies could be wiped out before we even realized what was happening. Chris stepped forward. This is just further proof of what I've been saying. The Voxari will stop at nothing to dominate us. We need to hit them hard and fast, make them think twice about messing with humanity. Admiral Graves nodded slowly. Agreed, it's time we sent a message they can't ignore. He met Chris's gaze. We're authorizing a strike on Vox Prime itself. You'll infiltrate the capital and hit their key military and government targets. Show them that nowhere is safe from humanity's reach. Chris felt a fierce grin tug at his lips. With pleasure, sir. He spent the next week handpicking his team and planning the op. Jack was a given, of course. The man might be a bit long in the tooth, but he was still one of the best damn soldiers Chris had ever served with. He also tapped Ava Lee, a brilliant young hacker who'd already made a name for herself in the UEG's Cyber Warfare Division. Her skills would be essential for breaching the Voxari's formidable network defences. The rest of the team was comprised of seasoned operatives, each one an expert in their field. They spent long hours training and drilling, honing their tactics and teamwork to a razor's edge. When the day of the mission finally arrived, Chris felt a strange sense of calm settle over him. This was it, the culmination of everything he'd worked towards since Alex's murder. They boarded a sleek diplomatic vessel, posing as a UEG envoy seeking to negotiate a peaceful resolution to the growing tensions. Chris tugged at the collar of his formal uniform, feeling naked without his usual combat gear. As they made their approach to Vox Prime, the planet's looming form filling the viewscreen, Chris couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to go very wrong. His instincts, honed by years of combat, were screaming at him that they were walking into a trap. But there was no turning back now. For better or worse, the die had been cast. Chris could only hope that his team's skill and determination would be enough to see them through whatever the Voxari had in store. He glanced around the cramped confines of the ship, meeting the eyes of each of his team members in turn. They nodded back at him, their expressions grim but resolute. All right, listen up, Chris said, his voice low and intense. We all know what's at stake here. The Voxari have proven time and again that they'll stop at nothing to wipe us out. This is our chance to show them that humanity won't go down without a fight. He paused, letting his words sink in. Each of you is here because you're the best of the best. I wouldn't want anyone else by my side for this. So let's get in there, do what needs to be done, and get out. For Earth, for the UEG, for Alex. A chorus of determined affirmations echoed through the ship as they began their final approach. The Voxari capital loomed before them, its gleaming spires and sprawling megastructures a testament to the Empire's might. But as they drew closer, Chris's unease only grew. 
The orbital defenses seemed to be on high alert, far more active than their intel had suggested. And was it his imagination, or were those defense platforms turning to track their approach? Suddenly alarms blared through the ship. Incoming fire, Jack yelled from the pilot's seat. Evasive maneuvers! The ship jinked and weaved as lances of plasma streaked past, the Voxari's anti-air batteries opening up with a vengeance. Chris cursed under his breath. Somehow they'd been made. Get us out of here, Jack, he shouted over the cacophony of alarms and explosions. But even as Jack wrenched the ship into a desperate climb, Chris knew it was too late. A searing bolt of plasma slammed into their stern, sending shudders ripping through the hull. Consoles sparked and smoked, the acrid stench of burning circuitry filling the air. We're hit, Jack reported, his voice strained as he fought with the controls. Engines are failing, shields at twenty percent. Chris staggered to the viewscreen, his eyes widening as he saw the swarm of Voxari fighters rising to meet them, their sleek forms glinting in the light of the planet's sun. They'd walked right into a trap, and now with their ship crippled and their cover blown they were sitting ducks. Chris's mind raced, desperately searching for a way out of this mess, but as the Voxari ships closed in, their weapons blazing, he couldn't escape the sinking feeling that this time he might have finally bitten off more than he could chew. The Voxari fighters swarmed around our ship like a pack of hungry Varal wolves. Green plasma bolts flashed past the viewscreen. The ship shuddered as the shields strained under the onslaught. Ava's hands flew across her console, her brow furrowed in concentration, as she tried to jam the Voxari's sensors and comms. It's no use, she said through gritted teeth. They knew we were coming. The whole damn defense grid is locked onto us. Another volley of plasma fire slammed into our shields, nearly knocking me out of my seat. Warning lights flashed red across the bridge. Shields down to 15%, Jack yelled over the blaring alarms. We can't take much more of this, Chris. I punched the intercom, sir. Brace for impact. We're going in hot. The ship bucked and heaved as Jack wrestled with the controls, trying to keep us level as we plummeted through the atmosphere. The ground rushed up to meet us, the towering spires of the Voxari capital city looming in the viewscreen. With a bone-rattling jolt, we slammed into the outskirts of the city. The ship skidded and sparked across the rocky terrain before finally grinding to a halt, half buried in the rubble of a collapsed building. For a moment, there was only the hiss of escaping Atmo and the crackle of flames. Then, one by one, my team began to stir, groaning and unstrapping themselves from their crash couches. Sound off, I barked. Everyone still breathing? A chorus of affirmatives echoed through the smoke-filled cabin. Miraculously, we'd all made it in one piece, but as we staggered from the wreckage, we found ourselves surrounded by a ring of Voxari soldiers, their plasma rifles trained on our chests. Drop your weapons, one of them snarled in heavily accented English. Surrender now and your deaths will be quick. I exchanged a glance with Jack, saw the same grim determination in his eyes. We'd come too far to give up now. I don't think so, I said coldly, and then all hell broke loose. We dove for cover as the Voxari opened fire, plasma bolts sizzling through the air. I popped up from behind a chunk of rubble, and drilled two of them through the head with my pulse rifle. Beside me, Jack lobbed a frag grenade into their midst, scattering them with a thunderous blast. But for every Voxari we cut down, two more seemed to take their place. They pressed in from all sides, forcing us back into a tighter and tighter circle. I could see the fear in my team's eyes as they realized the same thing I had. We were hopelessly outnumbered and outgunned. This was a fight we couldn't win. Just as I was about to give the order to fall back, a massive explosion ripped through the city centre. A fireball blossomed into the sky, followed by a series of secondary blasts that shook the ground beneath our feet. The Voxari soldiers faltered, some of them turning to stare in shock at the plumes of smoke rising from the heart of their capital. In that moment of distraction, I saw our chance. Push forward, I roared. Hit them now while they're off balance. With renewed determination, we surged forward, catching the Voxari in a withering crossfire. They fell back in disarray, their lines broken and scattered. 
As we fought our way deeper into the city, I activated my comlink. Bravo team, this is Alpha. What's your status? Over. Alpha, this is Bravo, E, came the crackling reply. We've hit the targets and are pulling back now. Rendezvous at the extraction point in 15. I allowed myself a tight grin. The second strike team had done their job just as we'd planned. Now it was up to us to finish this. Copy that, Bravo. We'll see you in 15. I switched off the comlink and turned to my team, my pulse rifle blazing as I cut down another pair of Voxari soldiers. You heard them, people. Let's move. We've got a revolution to start. Explosions rocked the city as Chris and his team fought their way through the rubble-strewn streets. Plasma bolts crisscrossed the smoky air. Voxari soldiers fell before the human operative's relentless advance. The towering citadel loomed ahead, its gleaming spires standing in stark contrast to the chaos engulfing the capital. That's our target, Chris shouted over the din of battle. Push forward! They battled through the citadel's heavily defended entrance, pulse rifles blazing. Voxari guards crumpled under the onslaught. The team moved swiftly through the ornate halls, neutralizing any resistance they encountered. Finally, they breached the council chambers. The opulent room was in disarray, Voxari leaders scrambling for cover as the humans stormed in. Chris zeroed in on the High Councillor, a tall, imposing Voxari with cold, calculating eyes. Zalvor, Chris snarled, leveling his rifle at the Councillor's chest. Surrender now and face justice for your crimes against humanity. Zalvor regarded Chris with a contemptuous sneer. You fool, you think you've won. He let out a harsh bark of laughter. We already have a plan in motion to unleash our bioweapon on your pathetic Earth. A sleeper ship, hidden from your primitive senses, already carries the virus to your homeworld. Chris felt a chill run down his spine. The attack on Vox Prime. Had it been a diversion all along, a way to draw their attention while the real threat slipped by undetected? Zalvor grinned, seeing the realization dawn on Chris's face. That's right, human. You've already lost. Soon your people will be nothing more than a footnote in the history of the Voxari Empire. Suddenly Chris's comlink crackled to life. Chris! Ava's voice was urgent. I've hacked into the Voxari network. I found the sleeper ship, but it's already close to Earth orbit. If we don't stop it soon... Chris clenched his jaw, his mind racing. The mission on Vox Prime was critical, but if that bioweapon reached Earth, he looked around at his team, saw the determination in their eyes, they would follow him to the end. Comet there was no choice to make. Earth had to come first. Billions of lives hung in the balance. Chris turned back to Zalvor, his expression hardening. This isn't over, he growled. We will stop that ship, and then we'll be back for you. Zalvor's mocking laughter echoed in their ears as they turned and sprinted from the chamber. They had to get back to their own ship, fast. The fate of humanity itself was at stake. As they raced through the war-torn streets, dodging Voxari fire and crumbling debris, Chris's mind whirled with desperate plans and contingencies. Ava was feeding him coordinates, plotting the swiftest course back to Earth. They just had to pray they wouldn't be too late. Chris clenched his jaw, his mind racing as he weighed the impossible choice before him. Earth hung in the balance, millions of lives at stake. But the mission on Vox Prime was critical too. If they didn't cut the head off the snake now, the Voxari would just keep coming. He locked eyes with Jack, seeing the same grim realization reflected back at him. Jack, take the team and get back to the ship. You have to stop that sleeper ship before it reaches Earth. Chris's voice was steely calm, belying the turmoil raging inside him. Jack's brow furrowed. What about you? We can't just leave you here. Chris shook his head. I have to stay and finish this, buy you the time you need. He clasped Jack's shoulder. You're the only one I trust to lead them, old friend. Jack looked like he wanted to argue, but he saw the resolve in Chris's eyes. He nodded curtly. Give him hell, Chris. We'll get it done. Chris watched as his team reluctantly filed out, casting worried glances over their shoulders. Then he turned back to face Zalvor and the remaining Voxari forces, a cold fury settling over him. He thought of Alex, of the brutal way the Voxari had murdered his brother. He thought of the billions of lives hanging in the balance, 
not just on Earth but across all the human colonies. It's just you and me now, Zalvor, Chris snarled, raising his pulse rifle. The Voxari leader sneered. You're a fool, human. You've already lost. With a roar of defiance, Chris opened fire, mowing down the Voxari soldiers as he charged forward. Plasma bolts sizzled past him, but he barely felt them. All that mattered was reaching Zalvor and ending this once and for all. In the Sol system, Jack pushed their battered ship to its limits as they raced towards the coordinates Ava had provided. The sleeper ship loomed before them, a dark shadow against the blue marble of Earth. There, Ava pointed at the screen. That's our entry point. Jack brought them in close, matching the sleeper ship's trajectory. All right, people, suit up. We're going in EVA. Moments later, they were launching themselves across the void, magnetic tethers pulling them towards the Voxari vessel's airlock. They breached the outer door and clambered inside, weapons at the ready. The ship's interior was dim and cramped, a labyrinth of narrow corridors. Voxari crew members shouted in alarm as the humans stormed in, opening fire with their plasma weapons. Jack and the others fought their way through, Ava guiding them towards the cargo hold. We're running out of time, she shouted over the din of battle. The ship's almost in range to deploy the bioweapon. With a final burst of desperate speed, they reached the hold. Jack slapped a breaching charge on the door and blew it open. Inside, a massive cylindrical device sat in the center of the room, ominous and pulsing with malevolent energy. There it is, Jack yelled. Ava, can you disarm it? Ava shook her head grimly. No time, we have to jettison it now. Working frantically, they rigged the canister with explosive charges. Ava typed furiously at a console, overriding the safety protocols. With a massive clang, the cargo bay doors began to open, the vacuum of space sucking at them. Blow the charges, Jack roared over the howling wind. The explosives detonated, shearing the canister free. It tumbled out into space, the deadly bioweapon glinting in the sunlight. Jack lined up a shot with the ship's weapons and fired. The canister vanished in a blinding flash of light. On Vox Prime, Chris battled his way into the council chamber, pulse rifle blazing. Zalvor stood at the far end, a plasma sword glowing in his hand. Chris discarded his rifle and drew his own blade, the one he'd used to kill Zolthar. They clashed in a flurry of sparks and flashing plasma, trading blows with lightning speed. Chris poured all his grief, all his rage into every strike, the memory of Alex's face foremost in his mind. Zalvor fought with the desperate strength of a cornered animal. Their blades locked, faces inches apart. You fight well for a human, Zalvor hissed, but you will still die, like all your pathetic kind. Chris bared his teeth. Not today. With a final titanic effort, he forced Xalvor's blade aside and plunged his own into the Voxari's chest. Xalvor's eyes went wide with shock and pain. He slid to the floor, green blood pooling around him. Chris stood over his fallen foe, chest heaving, as alarms blared and explosions rocked the citadel. He raised his gaze to the window, to the battered but unbroken world of Vox Prime spread out below. They had struck a blow today, he knew, one that the Voxari would not soon forget. But the war was far from over. His radio crackled. Chris, it's Jack, the package is neutralized. Repeat, Earth is safe, we're coming to get you. Chris allowed himself a small grim smile. They had done it. They had bought Earth another day for Alex and for all of humanity. But he knew that this was only the beginning. The Voxari would be back, and in greater numbers. Humanity would need every ounce of its strength and courage in the battles to come. And he would be there to lead the charge. The smoke still hung heavy over the ruins of Vox Prime's capital city as Chris made his way back to the extraction point. His armor was scorched and dented, his face streaked with soot and blood. The rest of the team was waiting by the shuttle, their expressions a mix of relief and exhaustion. Jack clasped Chris's shoulder as he approached. You had us worried there for a minute, boss. Thought we might have to come back and drag your sorry ass out of there. Chris managed a tired smile. You know me, Jack. Too stubborn to die. But even as they lifted off, 
leaving the smoldering wreckage of the Voxari stronghold behind, Chris couldn't shake the weight that had settled in his chest. The faces of the fallen seemed to hover in his mind's eye, the brave men and women who had given their lives to strike this blow against the Voxari. And Alex, the wound of his brother's loss was still raw and bleeding. The news of their victory spread like wildfire. By the time they touched down on Earth, it seemed the entire planet was celebrating. The streets were filled with cheering crowds, the air alive with a sense of hope and defiance. But in the halls of power, the mood was more somber. Chris stood before the UEG Council, his posture rigid, his face an impassive mask. The Voxari Empire has been dealt a severe blow, the Prime Minister was saying, but we cannot afford to underestimate them. This is only the beginning. She fixed Chris with a piercing stare. Commander Hawkins, in light of your extraordinary service, we have a new assignment for you. We need you to take the fight to the Voxari, to lead our forces in a full-scale offensive. You've become a symbol of our resistance, a beacon of hope for all of humanity. Will you accept this charge? Chris felt the weight of responsibility settle on his shoulders like a physical burden. He thought of Alex, of the price that had already been paid, but he also thought of the billions of lives still hanging in the balance, the fate of humanity itself. He squared his shoulders and met the Prime Minister's gaze. I accept. The war raged on, brutal and unrelenting. Chris threw himself into the fight with a kind of reckless abandon, leading charges and missions that others called suicidal. Some whispered that he had a death wish, that losing his brother had broken something inside him. But Chris knew better. He was driven by a higher purpose now, a burning need to see this through to the end. It was after a particularly bloody battle, as Chris was tallying the dead and wounded, that Ava pulled him aside. Her face was pale, her eyes haunted. Chris, there's something you need to know. Something I found in the Voxari databases we captured. She handed him a datapad with trembling fingers. It's about Alex. Chris stared at the screen, hardly daring to breathe. There in stark black and white was a report detailing a secret Voxari facility deep behind enemy lines, a facility where human prisoners were being held and subjected to horrific experiments. And among the listed subjects, one name stood out like a beacon, Alex Hawkins. Chris felt a surge of emotions, shock, disbelief, a wild, desperate hope. If there was even a chance that Alex was still alive, he knew it was a long shot, knew that the odds of infiltrating a heavily guarded Voxari installation and extracting a prisoner were vanishingly slim. But in that moment, none of that mattered. Chris gathered a small team of his most trusted operatives, Jack, Ava, and a few others, who had been with him since the beginning. They slipped away in the dead of night, without orders or authorization. The journey to the prison facility was harrowing, fraught with danger at every turn. They had to navigate through hostile territory, evading Voxari patrols and sensor nets. But Chris's determination never wavered, his focus absolute. When they finally reached the installation, they found it even more heavily fortified than they had anticipated. Voxari guards patrolled the perimeter. Automated defense turrets swiveled and tracked their every move. But Chris had not come this far to be deterred now. With Jack and the others providing cover fire, he fought his way inside, carving a path of destruction through the Voxari defenders. He raced through the labyrinthine corridors, following the schematics Ava had managed to extract from the databases, his heart pounded in his chest, adrenaline surging through his veins. And then at last he was standing outside the cell marked with Alex's designation. His hands shook as he worked the lock, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The door swung open and Chris stepped inside, and there, huddled in the corner, was a figure he almost didn't recognize. Alex was emaciated, his body covered in scars and bruises, his eyes once so bright and full of life, were dull and haunted. Alex, Chris breathed, dropping to his knees beside his brother. It's me, it's Chris. For a moment, there was no response. Then, slowly, painfully, Alex raised his head, 
his gaze focused on Chris and a flicker of recognition sparked in their depths. Chris? His voice was a raspy whisper, raw and broken. Is it... is it really you? Chris gathered his brother into his arms, tears streaming down his face. It's me, Alex. I'm here. I'm going to get you out of here. But even as he said the words, he could feel the wrongness in Alex's body, the unnatural heat radiating from his skin. Alex shuddered in his embrace, his breathing laboured and uneven. Chris, listen to me. Alex's voice was urgent despite its weakness. You have to leave me. You have to get out of here. Chris shook his head, his grip tightening. No, I'm not leaving you. Not again. Alex's eyes met his, and in their depths Chris saw a pain beyond imagining. Please, Chris, you don't understand. The things they've done to me, the things they've made me into. I'm not human anymore. I'm a monster. Chris's heart clenched, but he forced himself to hold his brother's gaze. You're not a monster, Alex. You're my brother, and I'm going to save you. Alex shuddered again, his body racked with agony. No, Chris, you can't save me. No one can, but you can... You can end it, please. I'm begging you. And in that moment, Chris understood. Understood the depth of his brother's suffering, the unimaginable torment he had endured. And he knew, with a certainty that shattered his heart, what he had to do. Tears streaming down his face, Chris cradled Alex close. I love you, little brother, he whispered. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And then, with a hand that shook only slightly, he drew his sidearm and pressed it to Alex's temple. Alex's eyes met his, and in them Chris saw gratitude and release. Thank you, Alex breathed, and then Chris pulled the trigger. He held Alex as he died, rocking him gently as the life drained from his body, and when it was over, when Alex was gone, Chris threw back his head and howled his grief and rage to the uncaring stars. The war ground on, but for Chris nothing was the same. He went through the motions, leading his troops, fighting the battles, but the fire that had driven him was gone, replaced by a cold, numb emptiness. They won in the end. The Voxari Empire was shattered, its leaders brought to justice. Humanity had triumphed, but the cost had been so very high. And now, as Chris stood before Alex's grave, he felt the weight of it all pressing down on him. The medal they had pinned on his chest, the accolades they had heaped upon him, they all felt hollow, meaningless. He knelt and placed a hand on the cold stone. I miss you, Alex, he whispered, every day, every hour. I'm so sorry I couldn't save you, but I promise you this. I won't stop fighting. I won't let your sacrifice be in vain. I'll keep going for you, for all of us. He rose and turned his face to the sky, to the stars that had once called to them both, and as he did he felt a flicker of something deep within him. Not peace, not yet, but purpose. For he was Chris Hawkins, defender of Earth, champion of humanity, and he had a job to do. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.